OK, we've looked at some KL property. Now I'm going to go on a three-hour road trip out of the heat of KL to go and look at something very, very different. I've got no idea what the investment potential is, but I hear they do a wicked cream tea. So we're on our way to the Cameron Highlands, 1,500 metres above sea level. And back in the day, the bridge used to come here to escape the hustle and bustle of KL and have a bit of R&R. &R. My mate's auntie owns a little old hotel out here, would you believe? And she's got to serve us Devonshire cream teas and talk about Malaysia old school. So here I am in the Cameron Highlands. You know what I think it needs? 60-storey tower block up there. Some lovely bungalows around the sort of rice paddies. I'm still not convinced though, it's rubbish here, I've got no signal. Still on our way to the Cameron Highlands, it is a gorgeous waterfall. Still can't get a signal though. What a great place! You've welcome got to be Auntie Nancy. Yes, welcome, welcome. Nice, give me a hug. Welcome, welcome. Come, welcome. let me take your hand. Fantastic place. And lead you to okay. my little hotel. So, Not how old is this place? I was built in 1937. And you bought it when? Oh, uh, more than 30 years ago now. Wow, so you must have been like five years old when you bought it. <laughs> <laughs> What a great place. I got, tell me a bit about this. So, what was it originally? It's a hotel. It was built as a hotel. And I hear it was like a little inn, right? So, you had to oh, come yeah, in through the bar. Oh, uh, the, the other side. Let me show you. Okay, like a traditional old English pub, basically. Yeah, that's right. Shall we? Fantastic. Okay, let's have a look. Day. I mean, this is where all the Brits came in colonial times to escape the heat This and was built because the convent school. They were uh, running a boarding school for those uh, aspects. The children were here. So when the parents want to visit them, they have no place to stay. So somebody built this. Let me get this right. So they're sending their kids to a convent school and they went to the pub to get drunk and eat some stuff. <laughs> yes. Okay. Sounds like a great idea. <laughs> But I'm not sure if this is a property investment, in fact, I'm pretty sure it isn't. But what a great place to go, and I'm going to get some free scones and jam, so I'm very happy. And are they building any ha any rich and famous coming out, building big houses, or mostly apartments? Uh, there are some oh, uh, some houses being built. Do you know the story about Jim Thompson? I know, I heard that. Ah, OK. Yeah. He was so, here. So he disappeared somewhere here? Yeah. He's not in the basement or anything. Oh, well, not in my basement, <laughs> but someone, just the latest story is that he's somewhere in the hills. Well, in case you don't know what we're talking about, a very famous businessman back in the 60s, Jim Thompson, who was a silk producer and manufacturer. Yeah. He went missing, he was a very rich guy, right? He went missing somewhere up here. We, we don't think, quite know, we, he probably had a scone and got full CIA. Well, I don't think there's any property investments for us here, but what a great opportunity to come and have a nice English tea or Cameronian tea and a scone. It's been absolutely wonderful. Thanks for looking after me, Nancy. You're welcome. Thank you. After country and rainforests, it's time to head back towards Kuala Lumpur for one final destination where there are major opportunities. We're in the suburbs of KL, back in Monkiara, where I met developer Judy Liu. Liu has already sold 80% of the 600 units on offer here. And who are buying these places? I mean, again, so that the viewers know, this is in Monkiara, it's a suburb, uh, they're bigger units. Who's buying them? Well, I guess um, we have quite a fair bit of international investors and also um, because uh, Sunny Monkiara, it's the first of its kind being uh, as a residential resort area. So we, we position our well, ourselves very well that um, a lot of investors are coming back. You know, I've, I've bought a lot of property over the years and I've heard first of its kind themes from a lot of developers yeah. and yeah. ultimately a lot of them just build you an apartment with a bathroom and a kitchen. What does first of its kind resort theme really mean? What does that mean? Well, it's a very complete facilities in uh, Sunny um, with uh, 50 meters uh, Olympic swimming pool and of course with a gym, very complete facilities. And of course the view, we have fantastic view. We have a fantastic view. Uh, it's overlooking the entire KLCC skyline. Yeah. What's the biggest unit? It's about 3,000 plus square feet. Yeah. Of course, uh, these are all the typical layout units. So this is very different again from KL. It's big family units. Of course, I'm playing devil's advocate there. I know this building very well. 
We took 100 units for our clients already. I personally, you may not know, have a unit in here as well. I also know that there's things like Tai Chi, there's a big art gallery here, so it very much is lifestyle. And I think the locals will absolutely love this because it's much more spacey with great views of the city. So I'm already a buyer. Thank you. So obviously there's a lot happening in Kuala Lumpur and Malaysia's surrounding areas. To wrap up and get a sense of the immediate future here, I went to some true experts in the property field. Well, I've been here a few days now and the market is very hot, lots of land buying. Is it okay. getting tougher to find land now? Um, to me, good land is always difficult to find, even in the, the, worst, the worst of time. Uh, similarly now, when the market is recovering, I mean the, the, since fourth quarter last year, the property market is picking up, um, there are more deals being done, um, so we can expect the uh, prices to go up, So, which means that there will be more demand for land. Yes, I think good land will be difficult to find in this and market. People are talking about global inflation and what mm. impact that will have on property markets. It's kind of double-edged sword. On one hand, people pay more for ownership of property because of mortgage okay. interest rates, but on mm. the other hand, commodity prices might drive up real estate values. Okay. Do you yeah. think real estate values will get driven up by inflation here? In Malaysia, I would say yes, because um, uh, people always look at properties as a defense against inflation. So I would expect people to buy properties, you know, uh, under this kind of environment. But I think uh, in terms of uh, construction costs, which is a, our main concern as a developer, it, we sort of see it stabilizing around this area. Okay. So, you know, unless the global economy really improves over the next year or so, whereby, you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, construction going on else, elsewhere in other parts of the world, you know, which then would drive up the uh, construction costs, we will see the, 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 the prices being maintained at this level. All this talk of property, and as usual, I'm starting to feel a bit peckish. Let's talk for a minute about Islamic banking. You know, we hear lots about this Sharia law and uh, taking a loan which is needing to be compliant and driving Middle East money into the market. Is that really working here? Well, we do have a fair bit of interest from the Middle Eastern. Uh, in fact, uh, in Malaysia, they can get a Sharia compliant uh, mortgage. Uh, and Malaysia is becoming like an Islamic banking capital, something like that. Okay. I do have a lot of new tenants that are coming to Malaysia to study about the Islamic financing. Okay, so we're going to finish up. We're going to eat this fantastic food and we, uh, I can't talk about property for many more hours when I've got that. What am I even looking at? What's, what's that? Well, that's uh, roti jala, I believe. It's a local delicacy. That's satay. That's probably beef satay and that's chicken. And this is chicken rendang. Is it going to blow my head off? No, 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 no. it's not spicy at all. You sure? Like, you yeah. take spicy. <laughs> I can take spicy. Try it. I'm going to try it. So there you have it, the Malaysian property market, a little bit spicy, but actually going in the right direction. Pretty safe for foreigners, and you know, pretty eclectic and interesting. Do you agree? Yes, absolutely. So what have we learned? Legally, it's about as safe as it gets to buy here as a foreigner. Mortgages are available, and capital gains tax is zero after five years. And on the rent front, yields are a healthy five to six percent. So, to sum up, more than anywhere else in Asia, Malaysia currently has all the right ingredients for property investment. A young and expanding population, combined with high rates of urban migration, means this is a great place to buy property. So Malaysia gets a big thumbs up. And that wraps up this episode of Buying Asia. Join me soon as we travel to more cities across the region. I'm Tim Murphy for Buying Asia, one brick at a time.